Alrighty, what's up everybody? How you doing? Welcome to my channel. I humbly thank you for stopping by. Um, this is not sure how long this video is going to be, but of course it's going to be edited when you see it. Therefore, it won't be absurdly long. So, I have made it to trucking school or a training center is more uh, appropriate to say. And what I mean by that is that I decided to get into trucking. I did a lot of research. This isn't a video about doing research and what's best for this, that, and the other. If you decide to go into trucking, do your own research, okay? Everybody's situation is different, so on and so on. Me, personally, I didn't want to be gone for 10 weeks with no pay. I didn't want to be gone for three weeks with no pay. So I went an alternative route. That alternative route was actually through a buddy of mine. And I went and I applied to a company called Old Dominion Freightline don't know about the company look it up it is an excellent company an excellent opportunity to work for if you want to stay home every day it's the company to go for if you want to drive and get paid by the hour it's the company to go for if you want to get an excellent 401k it's the company to go for um, there is room for growth there is room for a lot of stuff in this company you can drive by the mile you can drive by the hour you can do PND, which is local. You can do line haul. They even have team drivers if you're in the right state. Now, that being said, there are drawbacks to this company. For one, if you want to branch out on your own, this is not the company for you. Not long term. Two, you're not going to come to this company and jump straight into driving unless you already come here with your CDL. Which, if that's the case, why come here? Three, they have limited options for growth. And what I mean by that is they only do L2, LTL trucking. They don't do anything else. So you're not going to get into flatbed. You're not going to get into specific freight. You are literally just taking dry vans and short trails. They have straight trucks, pups, and dry vans. That's it. For me, that ain't where I'm trying to be at. All right. I'm going to be honest. It ain't for me. I want to do flatbed because it pays more. I want to have a fleet, neither of which I can do with Old Dominion. So, I'm going to do Old Dominion for a minute. I'm going to ride it out, get my experience, and then I'm out. Enough about that. This here is a wrap-up of my day one. I'll let you know what I get into because I haven't, honest, honestly, I haven't seen any videos about Old Dominion or their trucking school. So, here you go. If I'm the first, cool. If not, cool. Either way, it's all good, baby. So, look at my notes right here got my notes that I typed up I wrote up um, I got checked into the quality Inn. I am in Pennsylvania right now I'll be up here for a week their check-in required me to be here at Sunday night so it's Monday night now I checked in last night at 12 o'clock got my hotel room with the sleep I mean it's a basic hotel room I don't have a roommate I'm here by myself I got twin beds a TV Etc. Etc. Y'all know what the hotel room looks like. Come on, people. It ain't rocket science. All right. Now, 8 a.m. Monday morning is when my class started. Um, the reason why I say that is because this Old Dominion does not have a trucking class. Uh, it is not a trucking school per se. You're not going to come here, spend three, four weeks in a classroom and then you're out on your own that ain't how they get down with old dominion if you do like i did i came here i didn't have a cdl i'm getting my cdl this week you're going to start as a dock worker now what that means is you're going to be busting your ass driving a forklift easy work even easier money all right i mean for real they start you in the 20s like i started at 21 a homeboy started at 20, got another friend started at 22. All right, you ain't making no 10, 12 dollars an hour over here at OD. Okay, I'm gonna be real. They like throwing out money for people to do a little bit of work because they make the money in their trucking. That being said, you're gonna work that for about six, seven months. Then, if you want to, you get the opportunity to make moves to get into their trucking program. The moves for that is follows, and this is step by step because I just finished going through it. Step one. You gotta be in good standing, as always. They're not gonna send no dipshit people that don't know what they're doing, that's messing up on the job, that's got 
bad work ethic, bad work history, bad attendance. If you're doing all that, skip the video and go on to the next channel, okay? If you're worried about a drug test, skip the video and go to the next channel, straight up. So, good performance, good work ethic. Two, you gotta be there for about six to seven months on the dock. Now, with me, I started in the winter, so my first of my months was in the cold weather. It was about 20 degrees, because it's, it's not, they don't have temperature control docks. That ain't the case. You out there in the elements. Yes, you're covered up, but if it's cold outside, it's gonna be cold inside the dock. If it's hot outside, it's gonna be hot on side, in that dock. It is what it is. Three, you have to start learning how to jockey trailers. What that is, they have something called a yard horse. This is essentially half of a truck. And I'll post a, a picture of that so you can see what it looks like. Basically what it is, it's a vehicle that they use in their yard to move the trailers around from place to place. So you can move it from like door one to door 13, door 13, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so on. Using the yard horse is real easy. You ain't gotta get out and hook up much. All you do, you hook up one brake line and you move a lever. It's literally, it's just a lever on the front for you to be able to raise the fifth wheel so that you can hook up to and attach to a trailer. Um, you don't have to crank no landing gear, nothing like that. It's mad easy. Downside to that is that it turns super, super quick. It ain't like in a truck, all right? If you turn that wheel one time, best believe that trailer's gonna boop, make that turn and go. So you get used to making turns real fast. Three, once you go through all that, you gotta go to your safety manager, tell him that you wanna go to trucking school, okay? That's really where it begins at. If they accept you and everything, you fill out a paper application, then you fill out an online application of the same thing to make sure you get accepted. Then after that, you're gonna to talk to the terminal manager and then you start getting 25 hours yard time. Completely different from jockey. To get your 25 hours, I'm gonna tell you now, the key to your success for this, get you four drivers, four different people that you cool with. So when you start on that dock, you best start talking to people. You better start networking and get to know people, get to know drivers, find out who you can vibe with, who you cool with, who you not cool with, all right? You want four people that drive already that you're cool with. The reason for that is because everybody's schedule don't work out the same. And you're gonna need someone to fill up a space if someone dropped the ball. And what I mean by that is like, with me, I did mine on Saturdays and Sundays. Three hours Saturday morning, six hours Sunday, okay? If someone fell off, I had another driver to step up for him. So I was with one driver, driver A, Saturday mornings, eight to 11, every Saturday. Sunday, Saturday, Sunday afternoons, 11 to seven. If a driver fell off and you know he had something to do, cool, I understand. I was in a rush, I got my 25 hours done in about two and a half weeks. I was hauling ass, okay? Um, that was because they opened up a new terminal. I had to rush to get my stuff done. I was expecting to go in November, they bumped it up to August, so I had to hurry up and get done, all right? Uh, after that, then they'll let you know once you get those done, you don't need your CDL to come to class, all right? I found that out. They have a post that they put up called Learn as, Earn As You Learn, which is really awesome. So for me, I worked six months. Now I'm in class and I'm still getting paid the same price, the same pay grade that I was making on the dock. All right. That is key. That's why I came here, because if you go to places like Swift, go to places like CR England, CRST, uh, Roll Trucking, any of those schools, you're taking an L on money for the first two weeks straight up. Your third week, you're not making a whole lot. You're going to get base pay 40, 50, you know, 40 to 50 cent a mile per average, which is decent. But those miles may not add up. Something may happen here and here. The route that I went, I'm guaranteed to make that same pay grade that I was making while I'm in training. That's to get paid as you learn. Learn as you earn. Earn as you learn. Okay. Um, so, yeah. After that, you come up to wherever is the nearest large terminal that they have and you start your class. Now, your class is going to be with the regional safety director. He's going to be the one that teaches you everything. It's going to be a week of videos of book time and don't get me wrong you're gonna get a lot of stuff all right 
what I did to make sure that I can't get screwed up later is that I'm, I requested a copy of everything that I signed. And I highly recommend that you do that because a lot of people don't. They go in, sign stuff, don't barely read it, don't read it, turn it in, and they go. What I did, every time I signed it, hand it in, I need a copy. Signed it, hand it in, I need a copy. So I have a copy of everything that has my signature on it with the representative signature stating if I leave, I got to pay back this. I got to be here for such amount of time. Okay. That covers, that is my own CYA. Okay. Straight up. That covers me. I ain't worried about them. I'm worried about me. So, my first day, what happened was I started at 8 a.m. this morning. And that was hard considering I've been working overnights. All right. Nighttime, afternoon to overnights. My first day was nothing but paperwork, contracts, watching videos, and intros. That was it. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then I was out. Now, I'm fortunate because my hotel they put me up in, don't have to pay for it. I get reimbursed my meals at the end of the week up to $30 a day. $30 a day, that's pretty nice. Um, along with that, my hotel is literally half a mile away from the terminal so i can walk i ain't got to drive i'm saving my gas all right now i'm gonna show you what i got today when i started all right here's what they gave me now i'm a book bag fanatic so this bad baby right here made me very happy very large book bag all right in this book bag is a lot of stuff basically every piece of paper every notebook is in this book bag and don't get me wrong this book bag for a company issue piece of equipment it's a beast all right this book bag is huge and it, it opens up clamshell which if you know what that means basically it means it's most book bags they open up like here this book bag opens up that way all right so <clears throat> we're gonna hop right into this i know i just spent 12 minutes talking already the first thing that i received right here the truck driver training manuals all right this notebook has all the paperwork that I need to study goes over everything. I even have an entire breakdown of the CDL pre trip. All right. So that's one thing that I got. Boom. Next, I got a driver handbook. All right. Driver handbook. Pretty nice. Inside. I have copies of all the blank contracts that I had to sign, okay? Basically, the gist of it is that my training is free as long as I drive for them for a year. Not, nothing bad about that. That's with every trucking company you go to. Unless you're trying to kick out some serious bread, if you want to go and get trucking for free, you're going to have to pay up by driving. That's just what it is. You make them money, they pay for you to go to school or training or whatever. So, this here... It's all the driver handbook. All right. There you go. I also received a thick folder full of stuff. Now, this here is like employee training, other handbooks, claim prevention, all kinds of stuff. And it goes into all their different segments of driving, line haul, P&D. Etc. Etc. All right. I've got miscellaneous paperwork, all kinds of stuff that I need to keep up and make sure I have because when I come out of class, I got training for two more months before I'm on my own. That's another thing I liked about it. All right. They gave me a black plastic clipboard with a calculator so I can calculate how much I do. How many miles I'm doing, okay? Nice calculator. All right, let me look at the actual camera so you can see what I'm talking about. Pretty cool. Fairly thick, you know. It ain't gonna last long, it's plastic. But it is what it is. 
Now I also got, and this here is something I thought was pretty cool because this is very important for drivers. It's important for people in general. But if you buy it yourself, it's pretty expensive. But I got a brand new 2018 Road Atlas. Now, you've never seen an Atlas. You slack it. Pick it up because an Atlas is excellent for numerous things. For one, it's a map of every state. All right, it gives you the roads, the local roads, the highways, all of that. Two, if you ever want to move somewhere, you can look in your atlas and find out what is around your general area. It shows state parks, it shows major highways, major attractions. For instance, I live in Maryland, right? It just so happened I opened up the book straight to Maryland. So, if I wanted to, I could look here and see everything that would be around Maryland. The entire state, all right? Now, that ain't all that they gave you. The three most important books that they're going to give you, I call this the Trinity of Trucking, okay, is these three books right here. You have your safety regulations pocketbook. This needs to stay in your truck when you're driving, okay? Throw this in the door in a Ziploc bag and never take it out unless you need it. You get pulled over for a dot inspection, you're gonna need this book. You get pulled over by police, you're gonna need this book. You need to read something because you're stuck somewhere on your board, you're gonna need this book. Get the gist of it? Second thing, hazardous materials book, same thing. Throw it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the glove compartment, or not the glove compartment, you wanna throw this in the actual door panel and leave it there. Okay, you don't want to forget about it, but you want to leave it there. You're going to need this for everything. Once again, dot inspections, pull it over, need to look up something for yourself, make sure you're not screwed. This is the book. Last one right here is just a safety uh, emergency response guide. This book saves you if there's a spill, if there's an accident, a dot inspection, get pulled over by the police, whatever. You need this. So, all three of these go in a Ziploc bag, okay? They go in a Ziploc bag and they go inside of your truck and they stay there, all right? Now, what's cool about this, and I noticed something, every company, every trucking company uses the same trainers, all right? They use a company called JJ Keller. That company has been doing all kinds of safety videos for video for vehicles, uh, mechanics, for drivers, for years. That is the company you're gonna watch all your videos from, and they're gonna be from the 80s and 90s. You ain't gonna see no JJ Keller video from 2018 for safety regulations. They gonna show you something from 1999 with them cheesy ass actors, that cheesy writing, but hey, it's effective and it works. I don't personally understand why this thing gets updated every year. This gets updated every year. I'm sorry. This gets updated every year. This gets updated every month, but we're still watching videos from the 80s. Either way, that ain't up to me, all right? What else did I get? I got my log book which is where I track my on and off duties. All right, so it is black carbon copied. Now I'm gonna show you a page I haven't used. You're gonna learn how to fill this out. If you can find one, buy one of these yourself, get them from companies and keep them in your truck if your company doesn't provide it. But if they don't, they're illegal. All right, your company is running illegal if they don't give you these because if your system goes down, you still need this. And I'm learning about this now. So I already knew that you had to keep a paper bag up for everything, but I didn't know the importance of this until today. And the last thing, you ready for this? This was hilarious. This was almost a joke to me, all right? I worked for a multi-billion dollar company and $100,000 trucks hundreds of thousands of dollars of freight so we're moving right in case of an accident they gave us these old ass disposable cameras to use 
Now, it makes sense. It's like, hey, instead of trying to keep up with a memory card or send email files or anything, you just got a 35 millimeter film, click, click, take the picture of it, turn it in, you're good to go. But still, I thought this was pretty darn hilarious. So, um, I was given homework. I had to read three chapters or something, which it sounds like a lot, but literally two of those chapters was like two, three pages, so it wasn't a whole lot. Um, and that was pretty much it. I got off today at four o'clock sharp. By the time I got back to the hotel, it was five o'clock because I spent an hour extra going over pre-trip. Uh, you know, just a fun fact, 80% of the people, they fail their pre-trip on the first time. Not necessarily because you don't know what you're doing or saying, but because the pre-trip inspectors or the dot inspectors at your local Department of Motor Vehicle Office or Motor Vehicle Association, whatever, wherever you are, your local DMV, the inspectors are super, super particular. They can sit there and say, oh, you called this a tube instead of a hose, so you're failed. That being said, I'm studying that by practice. I'm not sitting there reading about it. I watch some YouTube videos. I got two printouts that goes over everything, and I practice it before I get in the truck. I practice it after my shift. That way I know I've got it down. So far, I've got it down to 32 minutes, all right? For me to do a full pre-trip inspection, 32 minutes. Um, I can stretch it out, go a little longer, but I don't want to go past 45 because at that point it cuts into my driving time severely. So it is what it is. If I encounter something that's messed up, go back over it, whatever. But that's pretty much a summary of my first day, my first day video. So um, I'm actually about to watch a little TV, chill. You know, I had my workout, got my shower, did my hair, got a little washed and conditioned. And then I'm going to hit the hay because I'm not used to being up early, early in the morning. Me and 7 o'clock do not agree. So um, then you may ask, oh, why do you get up at 7 if you're only a half a mile away? Look, I work out before I go to work, and then I'm walking to the terminal. So 30-minute workout, 10-minute walk. That gives me 40 minutes. I got 20 extra to be there. So uh, let's see. What else? What else? That's pretty much it. Now, once again... Thank you for stopping by my channel. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, drop a thumbs down, like in the description. If you didn't find it helpful, drop a thumbs up. I know I said that backwards. That was to catch you. Uh, no, but for real though, drop a thumbs up in the video if you like it. Drop any questions, comments you have in the comment section below. I'll be sure to try and get back to you at my earliest whenever I feel like it. Other than that, have a good night. I'll see y'all next time.